And well, 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 speaking of beast, welcome. I hope everybody's having a great night. I am Psycheshire and this is my domain. So welcome everybody. Sit back, lean back, put your feet up and just relax. Let me take you through story time. So it's been not too long. I'm trying to put a little bit of shorter amounts of time in between every time that I'm streaming. And good to know. I guess my mic is working. Yeehaw. So that works. So, here, there you go. How is everybody doing today? Check in with me. Tell me how you are doing. I hope everybody's doing great. I don't know about you, but I'm actually loving this quarantine crap because, yeah, I mean, I have a full-time job and I have a desk and I meet with people. But in all honesty, I'd actually prefer to be at home and I'd prefer to be doing this and yeah present and accounted for check in uh but i'd prefer to actually be working from home but however it is a thing i know that eventually Woo who did that crock bar oh my god you're such a dork but anyway you're so sweet too um crock bar is one of our mods so is vin smoke and so is fang i'm not sure if vin smoke and fang made it out tonight but if you see them or a croc, you can go grab them by the scruff of the neck and kind of, you know, throw them in here. Tell them they have mod duty. So, yeah. Get Fang and get Ven. See if either one of them come in here and say hello. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I'm eventually going to have to go back to work, I know, in a building and, you know, dress up and blah, blah, blah. But I'd prefer not to. But right now I'm not. So that means I get to be on here a whole lot. So let's go and let's talk a little bit about the stream. And for those of you that are new, welcome to my domain. And what do we got? If you look down there, down at the little picture thingies, uh, yeah, that's me. And there's a Discord, there's a Twitter, there is a Steam, and there is a YouTube channel. And with all of those, you can have access to get a hold of me if you need me. Discord, that's my actual Discord channel. Talk to me anytime you want. Say hey, come in, sit in voice chat, whatever. And then we can also play Dead by Daylight. You also have Twitter. That's where you can figure out exactly what I'm doing most of the time. Or you can see me have my moods when I hit Pinterest and go, ooh, this ought to be nice. This, this, this. And then start flooding uh, my... Twitter account with all kinds of Pinterest stuff. There's my Steam account so that if you want to hook up with me, then when I'm playing Dead by Daylight, you can actually jump in and play with me, which would be fun as I'll get out. And then you also have my YouTube channel. YouTube channel has clips of Dead by Daylight. It also has Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. It also has Vampire the Masquerade Coteries of New York. And as soon as I cannot wait till Bloodlines 2 comes out. Oh my gosh, it's going to be amazing. So, yeah. And we also have any of the streams that we do here. We try to upload to YouTube because we know Twitch tends to uh, erase them after a certain period of time. So, given that, there's also information about me. There's also emotes that we have had made from some really amazing artists uh, that we use for our emotes. There's rules. There's Chester the Chat Cat. And Chester the Chat Cat doesn't put up with any negative behavior, or at least behavior that will get you in trouble. And, yeah, so there's some rules. What is it? VTM Bloodlines. When you mention its name, someone reinstalls it and plays it. What? What? That was an amazing game. I love it. I've got some clips from that that are really funny. So I cannot wait to hit the second one. I've already pre-bought it. I'm just waiting for it to get in. And there is my bladed whip, which is the most amazing weapon of all. And it's actually sitting on my uh, wall itself. If there's any of the music that I've played that you actually like, and you're like, yo, cat, I like this one. I like this one. The first one. The third one. Just let me know. And I'll give you the names of them. I'll even give you the links if you want them. So, now that we've done all the intro thing, we're going to talk about the game Red Embrace Hollywood. If you actually look on Steam and you look it up, it can be a very naughty game. So what I say when I'm playing Red Embrace Hollywood, Croc, can you hit the uh, parental advisory? Thank you. In this advisory, it lets you know that this is a blind playthrough. Depending on which choices I make can lead me into debauchery or not. 
and we've been very good about avoiding that. Although the last couple of times we played, I died. I actually died. We took, got into some crap, and then I ended up dying. I'm like, no, this is not acceptable. So we actually went back to a save point and took it from there and got a different ending. But it was very shocking because it's like the game just stopped, just literally went blank. And I'm just like, uh, no, this is not going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to play. We've already taken the second ending. Like we restarted and went to the second ending or the second path, I should say. And we're going to see where this leads us. And hopefully I will not die again. So we have to be very careful the choices we're making because apparently right now it's like a do or die thing. And I guess we're getting kind of close to the end. So letting you know this is also a text-based game. As we go through the game, there's going to be times where you're going to have to make a choice. Oh, I got one of the two common. Congrats, you got one of the two common endings during the last stream. Woot woot. Oh, I don't know if that's good or not. Um, but anyway, yeah, as we go through... There's going to be times where the game is going to say, pick one, two, three, or four. And I'm going to say, pick one, two, three, or four, because this isn't just my adventure. You're in this with me, too. So do not snooze, or you shall lose. I'm going to ask you to vote. You need to vote as fast as you possibly can. Don't even wait to think. Just vote. And that way I can pick the, mo the votes, and we don't have to wait too long. And then we'll go through all of this. Always take the choice that leads to debauchery. Well, I will say this, now that you've mentioned it, if this does go into debauchery, then I reserve the right to stop the stream, delete the VOD, take the game with me over to my Discord, and we will go as deep and as dark and as dirty as you want to go into debauchery. Another reason to have my Discord server. <laughs> that way, if I ever have to move the game, you know exactly where to go, and then we can go for this for reals. So, we haven't hit too much debauchery yet. Not enough to make me have to do hit that TOS. Oh, I love you, too. Mwah! You ready? How many of you want to play this game? I'm kind of hungry. What about you? I think it's time we played the game. You ready? Buckle up, buttercup. This is going to be one hell of a ride. So yeehaw, ladies and gentlemen. I heard the click. I'm going to make the assumption that you guys probably will, too. So, about ready. I know I am. Let's give this a whirl. So, where were we last time? Let's load it up. Hmm. We got July 14th. I th Was that really the last one? No, it wasn't. It couldn't have been. Nope, July 26th. There we go. Oh, I was getting freaked out. Hey, Vin Smoke! Yeah, did you get snatched in here? Vin Smoke! I got static. That's the game. Trust me, when I get it going, it won't have that. Promise, promise. So, hey, Vin, did you get snatched in here? Or did you happen to see the, uh, the thingy? Go get Fang. Make him come in here, too. All right. Let's crank this. You ready? They're gonna jump our base in Hollywood tomorrow night. Sounds like Queen Bitch is really pissed. They got a kill on sight order for all of us, even Cheshire. She. Randall curled one hand into a fist sinking his nails into his bandaged palm. One, two, or three. Either she should have seen this coming, or good, we won't show them mercy. Or was she planning this from the start? And to catch all of you up on what's going on, basically Saros, which is the lady kind of in charge of 
my particular character, and has been this entire time, told my character, Cheshire, that she was going to have to get up in front of all of these other, the equivalent of clans, and tell them, guess what, we're in charge. So, yeah. That didn't work out well, because when we took that ending, that's when my character died. So, we took a second ending this next time, and Randall saved us, which is the guy on the left here. So, yeah. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Re Ravenclaw! Hey, Ravenclaw, glad to see you here. Glad you can kind of help us. So, here we go. Which one you want? Do you want one, two, or three? Either she should have seen this coming, or good, we won't show them mercy, or number three, she was planning this from the start. You tell me. One, two, or three, chat pack. Remember. You snooze, you lose, so you better pick quick. Don't make me wait. We got a three from Croc. We got a three. Three. Yeehaw, we're going with three. Raise Gehenna. <laughs> Go with two. <laughs> Not yet. Even if she did, it doesn't matter now. As more and more of the crowd started listening to our conversation, the chatter slowly faded into soft, Worried mutters and whispers. So you guys are getting a static. Is it better? Oh, you know why? I didn't have it close to my mouth. Does it sound better now? I could actually reach out and lick it, but I don't want to. Could though. <laughs> Yeah, sounds better. I had it farther away from my mouth. Now it's like so close one was tempted to reach out and look at, but I won't. <laughs> People started moving closer to Randall and me, as if they were experiencing some kind of important announcement. Then it sounds like tomorrow's gonna be our big last stand. A grim expression clouded Randall's features, where I couldn't see any trace of enthusiasm. We've got to make it count, because if we fuck this up, I don't think we'll be getting another chance. The Scari and the Gulls won't wait for us to get even stronger. When we head to the base, we could try and talk first, or just charge as soon as we see them. End things as soon as we can. But as much as I'd like to reach some kind of last-minute treaty before shit kicks off, I've got my doubts they'll feel much like talking. Fang, are you lurking? Tisk tisk tisk. There you go, Fang. JNPO8 is also known as Fang. Another one of my mods. Sweet. So we've got one two or three. Either we should try and talk with them as long as there's a chance, or there won't be compromise we have to fight, or mm, I'm not sure I'll leave the decision up to you. So either one, two, or three. Which one shall it be? And yes, Vin did take over. He did an excellent job. Applaud to the Vin. You did a great job, Vin. Thank you. Fang eliminated a bot. He bit into it, chewed it up, spit it out, and got rid of it. So, Cor Corvid has either a two or a three. Talk to me, chat. Three. Come on, a two or a three. I'm assuming Donnie is thinking too. You did great, Vin Vin. Three. Sweet. Croc, you want to fight? Is that what that is? That's a fight? Three. We're going with three. Let's see if this turns into a spat. 
<laughs> then the time for talking's over. Tomorrow we'll kick their asses. A chorus of cheers rang out after Randall's reply. They seemed eager to tear into the enemy right now. What about Queen Bitch? Yeah, what are we going to do about her? What if she sticks around? Two loud voices impatiently called out from the crowd, echoed by murmurs of agreement. Yeah, there's still one thing we gotta agree on. I know I've talked a lot of shit about Queen Bitch, and she deserves it, that fascist Prada-wearing fucker. She can't stay in the city, that's for fucking sure, but we don't have to kill her either. A few unhappy mutters sprang up at that, but most of the crowd waited for Randall to continue. Cheshire, you've put up with more of her shit than any of us. What do you think? One, two, or three. You saw it as panda wearing fucker. I <laughs> I saw that myself, but I had to stop. I had to like really quickly readjust my head. But I saw the same thing you saw. But yeah. <laughs> Either Soros doesn't deserve to die, we should let her escape, or I hate her, but I don't want her dead. Or she has to be killed. Which way are we going? We got a three. We got a two. What else we got, Chad Pack? Come on, that's not enough. Talk to me. Two, three, two. So we got some twos. We're going more along the two line. Five, four, three, two. What? Does your character hate Soros? Um. Yeah, I think she probably does. But I don't think she wants her dead. So I'm agreeing on the twos. I was going to let you guys vote, but you're taking a while. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm thinking a two. We'll go with two. See what happens. Yeah, I'm with you there. Then we'll let her leave the city as long as she never comes back. But she better not fucking come back. Randall's words were met with cheers of approval, though they seemed a little quieter than before. When tomorrow comes and we face them all, head on as a unified group, that means the real revolution is finally here. And it doesn't matter how many Ascaria Gauls there are, or how much blood we lose, or how long we have to struggle for our rights, because nothing can stop us now. As Randall's last words echoed through the garage, a chorus of frenzied cheers and yelling surrounded us. But finally, the group began to disperse, heading off to prepare weapons or settle down for the rest before morning. Randall was still standing beside me, his eyes closed in a brooding look. One, two, or three. Either I'll be ready for tomorrow, Randall, come what may, number one, or are you feeling okay? Number two, or wait, what about Andre? Three. Which one do you think we should do? Now remember, Andre, if I remember correctly, is the guy that was from the um, graveyard, which we haven't seen anything about since that. So that's kind of odd to me to have that just spring there. And then there's the, are you feeling okay? I mean, he looks like he's a little wagged out there. Or I'd be ready for tomorrow. I kind of am leaning two or three. So talk to me, Chad, what are you thinking? Two. What else? Two. What else? G 
Give me more chat. Come on. More. I got a three and two twos. I'm leaning. Let's go with two. Let's try. Yeah, I'm fine. Just thinking about tomorrow. But don't worry about me, Cheshire. He smiled faintly, rubbing a hand along his forehead. Randall seemed like he wanted to be left alone, so I made my way towards a quiet-looking corner to settle my thoughts. As I left the group, however, I saw a man wandering near the elevator by himself, dressed in a sharp jacket and pants that looked more appropriate for a business party. He seemed to be lost in thought, his hands tucked casually in his pockets while he strolled along the garage. All right, y'all want to bet it's Marcus? Oh, I bet you it's Marcus. Okay, either what are you doing over here by yourself, or leave him and go rest. My curiosity would be to hit number one. Because I really do think it's Marcus. Could be wrong. But he's like one of those... Yeah, he's one of those guys that just kind of... Pops out of nowhere. Let's try one. We're going on a unanimous roll here. Pausing mid-stride, the man glanced over when I called out to him, his lips twisting into a wry smile. I probably look pretty crazy, don't I? Like a yuppie who wandered into the wrong building. But I'm a barbar. I promise. And I'm here to help everybody out. Okay, I might be wrong then. He adjusted his tie, then pulled out a cigarette and slid it between his lips. I haven't seen you before. Probably because I'm not at the beach often. Every time I go, the clan says, Hey, Theo, why don't you drop the business stuff and come stay with us? The man, Theo, presumably, chuckled faintly. But I never really got into the big group thing. And I try to be my own person, at least, until the loneliness comes back and bites me in the ass. And now, with everything about to go up in the air, it just wouldn't feel right if I was off by myself somewhere, knowing everyone else was risking their lives. One or two, chat. Either, so once the fight's over, you're going to go off on your own again? Or how exactly are you going to help out dressed like that? I don't know. I've seen enough uh, assassin movies to know you can kill in a suit real easily. Doesn't take skill. It just takes class. <laughs> so, what are we thinking? One, two, or three? Talk to me. One, one. I'm kind of feeling one. The deuce about to go John Wick. Woot, woot, woot. John Wick. John Wick. Absolutely. <laughs> one. One. I'm kind of feeling a one. Don't ask the man about his clothes. If you look good, you look good. One. Yeah. Probably. That's what I've always done. But whenever the clan needs me, no matter how far away I am, I'll always come back. Anyway, I'm going to go get some fresh air before the sun comes up. But hey, if I don't see you tomorrow, or if I don't see you again, good luck out there tomorrow. Giving me a small, firm nod, Theo flicked away a cigarette and wandered towards the staircase his solitary figure vanishing into the darkness. Alone once more, I curled up on the cold concrete 
a stark contrast from my warm bed at the hotel. With a constant chatter around me and an endless carousel of thoughts circling in my mind, sleep didn't come easy. But finally, restless dreams pulled me away. The smell of anxiety and bloodlust hung in the air. Marvar lurked in the alley on either side of me, murmuring among themselves quietly. As prepared as we were, it still felt like anything could happen at any moment. But the minutes dragged on in silence. An hour earlier, we'd all left the parking garage together. No one wanted to stay behind. Some of the rebels went back to Santa Monica, preparing, setting up preparations at the house in case we needed to fall back. The rest of our group insisted I come with them. So I split off with a smaller force to defend the Marvar hideout in Hollywood. In the end, I decided to, one or two, fight in the battle myself or stay nearby, ready to help or negotiate. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those places where the path is going to split. One way we die, one way we don't. I'm kind of feeling that, but I could be wrong. Do we fight in the battle or do we... <laughs> Stanking Donnie, you're going to get me killed. Or stay nearby, ready to help or negotiate. What are we thinking? We've got two for number one. So you tell me, chat. <laughs> Save, then one. <laughs> That's a good point. I think I'll save. <laughs> Thank you, Fang. Save first. All right, we're going to save this because, you know, this happens to us quite often. We're going to override that. All right, there we go. See, we saved it right there. Let's go back. All right. So save first, then one. Let's hope I don't die. I did, that did save, right? Yes. I wanted to be part of the fray myself, not stick to the sidelines. Randall offered me several weapons, so I chose to fight. All right, either up close and personal with melee, or at a safe distance with a gun. What? I'm not even going to bother saving at this point, because it's too close to the other one. So one or two, either up close and personal with melee, or at a safe distance with a gun. Which one? At a safe distance with a gun? Now, normally, normally, any of my characters would be number one. Actually, I take that back. If using knives would be number one. But if you using Lure of Flames, it would be number two, but not with a gun. See my previous answer. No guts, no glory, number one. I got two twos and a one. Come on, chat pack, help me out. This is one of those moments I kind of want to, uh, my hunger says one, my intellect says two. <laughs> I don't know which way to go. Mm, I'll leave it to you guys. We got two twos and two ones. Come on. Usually I play a la Zombra, so I'm sitting back at arms, uh, arms of the abyss seeing people. Yeah. Well, see, I do Laura Flames, so usually I'm a range weapon. However, I have a massive, massive uh, obsession with blades. So, yeah. Feed. Straight up, feed. Um. Uh, Croc, where you at? What do you think? Two or one? You said two, right? 
You said two, Fang says two, Magic says one. We got a one. We got way too many ones. All right. Screw it. I'm going to I'm going to save it and then we're going to do one. We're going to save. We're going to save. We're going to save there. So we're going to have this like multiple saves here. All right, return. We're going to say one. Let's see what happens. Dinner is best when intimately enjoy. Oh. Oh, you have no idea. I went with a long pair of knives, light and sharp. It was enough to defend myself and help disable the enemy. But I hadn't been in a real fight against other vampires yet. Now see, you gonna get me killed, y'all. <laughs> Let's hope not. I just have to trust my instincts would match theirs. We were spread out in front of the hideout's entrance, keeping an eye out for any Golgotha or Iskari, while other Marbar made sure passing humans didn't get too close. A street or two away, Randall was waiting with another group, ready to protect and secure our escape route if we needed it. Here's the delicious part. Mouth's watering already. Everyone had their weapons ready to attack on sight. But there was no sign of our enemies. Wait, what was that? Huh? What was that? That movement, like a blurry scent close by. I glanced up to see two guards at the end of the alley muttering to each other. What the hell? It's, it's, it's huge. It's coming this way. On the right, uh, on the left. What the fuck are you? Get down. They dove to the ground right as two bullets flew past. At that exact moment, out of nowhere, I felt two giant presences suddenly approaching us. For a split second, everyone around me looked paralyzed, petrified in fear. It was closing in on us from both sides, thundering footsteps getting louder, crushing us like trapped insects. Within seconds, a cataclysmic fight exploded in front of me. All I could see was gunfire and streaks of blood. Everywhere I looked, corpses were already falling, pools of blood splattering the asphalt. Shrieks and howls blended into one constant roar, and the stench of death clogged my senses. Letting my instincts take over, I charged into the clash of bodies. Before I knew it, I was slashing out with my knives, carving into the nearest enemy. Rawr! A blood-curdling scream rang in my ears. I dove forward to slash again. I dove forward to slash again and again. I dove forward to slash again. And again, and again. I felt my body moving faster than my mind, dodging and lunging on pure reflex. Bullets grazed my sides, missing my skin by less than a hair. Everywhere I turned, figures lunged at me with claws and knives. Each time I returned their attacks, each time I splattered their acidic blood against the ground, Something slashed into my side, sending a bolt of pain through me. But I gritted my teeth and kept going. I had to keep going. The air blended in a cacophony of laughter, roars and screams. Gleeful and horrified, 
like sounds rising from hell. Some vampires had already given up, turning tail and fleeing for their lives. Others were trying to claw their way to safety, only to get cut down before they could escape. Each time I blinked, I saw a different body falling down. More and more piling up on the ground in heaps of entrails, shattered bones, crushed organs. Dead friends, dead enemies, and corpses beyond recognition. But in death, all of them looked the same. chaos seems to stretch on and on and on. But at last, the screams died into whimpers. In reality, the fight had only lasted a few minutes, even though it seemed like forever. But because of our monstrous natures, the results were horrific. All around me, dead vampires covered the ground, headless, limbless, or with their hearts cut open. The stench of their blood permeated the air, belching out from their open wounds. Slowly, I realized that we'd won. There were more rebels still alive, some groaning and shuddering on the ground, others helping Tandy to the fallen. Hey, Sensei, The Golgotha and the Ascari had fled, leaving only their dead behind. But we'd lost many of our own, too. All of these corpses would have to be taken away, and one by one they'd become a tragedy to someone, not just part of a faceless mass. By the way, 911 London, bring bottles, ask no questions. <laughs> Sorry, that's like a private joke. <laughs> On um, Sabat's server, my character, anytime my character like fought a lot of enemies at once, it was always 911 uh, London, which happens to be Crocvar. Uh, yeah, sigh, I'll get the fire axe. <laughs> Bring some bottles. Ask no questions. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> and just as I finally stumbled away from the sea of bodies, a human passed by the alleyway. He froze mid-stride, staring down at us, at the mangled bodies littering the concrete. The moment seemed surreal. I almost expected to jolt out of a dream from anesthesia in a dentist's chair to realize everything that happened since that night at the club was one long, bizarre delusion and I was back in the normal waking world. Yes, then, the thought had occurred feed. The man's eyes met my own. His pupils, like two TV screens switched off, held a blank look that had to be pure, abject horror. Or so I thought, until he shrugged and continued on. At first, I was stunned 
It was like the horrible sight hadn't affected him at all. But after a moment, I realized why the man hadn't shown any reaction. I bet you there's some kind of... They did some kind of cloak and shit. I wonder if they used an ability. Or like a discipline of some kind. Am I right? Am I wrong? He must have thought he'd wandered past a movie set. And somewhere, there were eagerly rolling cameras panning slowly across the bleeding corpses to capture every cinematic drop. Because after all, this was Hollywood. That better not be the end of this game. I'll be pissed. No, it's not. Whew. <laughs> Man. Cold out here tonight, isn't it? Glad I wore my fucking jacket. A quiet sigh came from beside me. Breaking the silence. I glanced over at Randall. His broad figure towering over my side like it so often did. The breeze ruffled through his untamed hair. And as he lowered his head to meet my gaze. <laughs> you're a dead. Why do you need a jacket? What the fuck? <laughs> Shh. You're messing up the romance moment here. Don't mess it up. Come on. <laughs> he offered me a faint, uncertain smile. Shh. <laughs> it was hard to believe that three months had already passed. After the huge fight, we let Saros escape the city along with a large group of Ascari still loyal to her. The last we'd heard, she was heading down to San Diego, which had a fairly small coven and no real leader. Nothing bad could happen there, surely. As for Andre, he disappeared from the city before we catch him. And so did Lazarus. One of them probably caught up with the other, but I never found out who survived. If it was Andre, he'd probably surface again sooner or later. But if Lazarus had managed to kill him, well, it seemed unlikely that he'd come back to LA. Red Embrace 3, Soros Bizarre Fenders. <laughs> With no more strict rules in place, the coven had settled down into a strangely easy peace. Although Randall's clan of rebels didn't technically exist anymore, the number of vampires who looked up to him seemed to grow every night. Some of the Ascari and Golgotha even gravitated towards him, drawn by the increasing amount of stories and legends people shared. But as the war's chaotic night slowly faded into a distant memory, it seemed like Randall would never escape the role of a leader. The leader that every wanted him to be. People always came to him with problems, begging him to fix them or offering new ideas for laws to keep the coven safe. Others wanted Randall to help liberate covens from Iskari rule, like the one in San Francisco, or to use his power to influence other leaders. And amidst all that attention, adoration and the unending stream of demanding voices. The only voice 
I never seemed to hear was Randall's. And as for David, because I wasn't able to visit the hotel again for weeks, I wasn't sure about his fate. And for weeks, there was no sign of him. But soon, I learned that he hadn't been killed. Instead, someone told me they saw him with another vampire, a man who apparently taken him in as a pet. We want to make any bets? I swear it's Marcus. Okay, I'm probably wrong. We'll see. After that, we never encountered each other again. Heath. Oh god, I hate Heath. Ugh. But amidst all the chaos and the calm that followed, there was one person I could never truly forget. Marcus! It's Marcus! I'm telling you! I still had the keys to Blood and Roses that he'd given me, and I decided to... Told you it's Marcus. Either keep them somewhere safe, but not visit the shop. Visit the shop regularly, keeping it clean, or throw the keys away. I'm pulling rank. I'm going to pull rank. Exactly. We're going with visit the shop. Yep. We're going to visit the shop. I stop by Blood and Roses every week or so, dusting things off, brushing away cobwebs from the mannequin's fingers. Despite Marcus's absence, or maybe because of it, the shop received a lot of mail from different senders. Love letters. Hate letters. Various gifts in telltale phallic packaging. It made my cleaning nights interesting, to say the least. One night, I spotted a small box in the back room, one I'd never noticed before. Curious, I pulled it open and realized it was filled with cat food. The discovery completely baffled me at first, but when I studied the room more closely, and I just missed that, <laughs> a small window that was low enough for a cat to jump into, wobbly suction cupped dildos attached to the wall, covered in scratch marks, and two bowls tucked away in a corner. Apparently, this is where Marcus fed the local feline community, and also used his unwanted merchandise as cat toys. You know, I could see this. After that, I felt obliged to leave the windows open during my visits, setting food out for the cats. It seemed like a fitting way to honor Marcus in his absence. Now and then, Randall came with me to the shop, helping out in his own ways. Even though he parted from Marcus on that sour note at the club, I could tell Randall still missed him. One night, I noticed him furtively shoving something into his pocket. And later, when I searched behind the counter, I saw that Marcus's spare pair of sunglasses had gone missing. That bitch stole his sunglasses. Wow! Talk about disrespect. But I didn't have the heart to confront Randall about it, so I just pretended not to notice. I don't know how many he has. <laughs> Even though Marcus was gone, his word at the beach seemed to have a lasting impact. A small, 
but steadily growing clan of Marvar had sprung up following Marcus's idea that the original clan's fear of Soros had given her power. That wasn't all, though. They twisted his words about equality, turning it into an excuse to discriminate against other vampires who didn't share their views. I had a feeling that if Marcus had been here, he would have been disappointed with how things turned out. But then again, maybe he'd expected it to end this way. You think he'll ever come back? Randall's soft question pulled me from my thoughts back to where we stood on the Hollywood Hills. I know it's fucking impossible to predict that guy, but I wonder if he'll ever show up in Hollywood again. One, two, three, or four. Now listen to where one, two, and three, and four are. Definitely, and I'll be here when he does, is one, or two is right below it. No, I think he's moved on. Three is I'm not sure. I wish he would, but I don't know. And four, I think he will, but as a very different man. I'm wanting to say one. It's either one or four. What do you think? What do you think? We got four. We got four. We got three. Come on, chat pack. This is leaning towards the end of the game. So this could be the last time you actually vote, I'm thinking. We got four, four, three, four, one. What are we thinking? Four? We got a bunch of fours. Hmm. Let's try four. Now remember what, you know what? I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. Cause I might end up having to come back. Overwrite save, yes. All right, so remember it says bottom one, right? Okay. We got four, four, four. We got four, 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 four. One, one, three, three. Now we're gonna try four, but we might come back, so. A different man, huh? You know, you might just be right. Randall smiled faintly, glancing down at me with a wistful chuckle. You know, Cheshire, I have this really funny feeling. This feeling that wherever Marcus is right now, whether he's half a world away or right down the street. He's still watching us somehow. And as fucking creepy as I know that sounds, kind of makes me happy. We are done! We are done with the game, guys. So, what do you think? Da, 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 da. So, yeah, we got the good ending. Woo! Woo! All right, so. Now I heard there are additions we can do to this. So that might be a thing. The other thing is also, so I'm gonna have to find another game to play. And so I'm gonna be looking for that. I heard there is additions you can do to Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines to make it more like Sabat, which trust me, it was torture playing it as a Kami. And what did I have? I had like, 
zero humanity or something crazy like that. I can't even remember what it was. Yeah, it's all wrapped up in nice neat little package except what attacked us. Who was Chet? Who was the John Wick dude? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I have no clue. But it was cool. I enjoyed it. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is obviously not this. So we're going to be looking for another game. I might try to take Bloodlines 1. Yeah, it was two humanity out of four and five masquerade breaches. I breached the hell out of it all the time. In fact, what's really funny, when I played, okay, everybody knows if I play Laura Flames, there have been times where my characters had a malfunction and just flamed the fuck out on the street. Well, guess what? I did that in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. And that's one of the things that dropped me to, down to like major masquerade breaches where I was going to be killed on the street if I even came out of the sewers. So, we know now this is a thing. Masquerade breaches is a thing. I am pure sabot, people. That's just how it is. So, while we have this wonderful music playing in the background, I want to thank you guys. It has been an absolute blast. We will shut the stream down. I'm looking to see if I see anybody that I know that is online. Crockbar, help me a bit. Let me see if there's any of our vampire friends that are online. Will I play the other routes as well? I can. Would you like me to? If you'd like me to, I will. I have no problems going back and starting it over and playing the other routes if you would like me to. That is up to you. Tell me what you want me to do. So yeah, if you want me to, I'll be more than glad to do that. It was a great stream, wasn't it? As far as like the action and the thing. I mean, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the action in the game. But yeah. So we have some options of things that we can do. I can do both. I can take a different route in this. Or I could try to do... Do I huh? Do I play... Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> no! I actually role play. I do role play, and normally when I do, it is almost always Sabat. And I tend to like to play... Um, oh, I have all kinds of games I want to stream. And I'll find some. We'll talk about that. What I'll do is, those of you that are not on my Twitter account, get on my Twitter account. Croc, can you throw that back up there? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something out where I list a bunch of games and you guys get to vote. And the only place you'd really get to vote is Twitter because it's the only place I can really set this up to do it. So, are you talking about, um, uh, what is that called? Uh, oh no, I totally forgot it. What was that game? Mm, it's not a vampiric type of game, though. Disco Elysium, which I heard is crazy. It's not vampire at all, but Disco Elysium. That might be a thing. So, all right, so guys, how about this? In celebration of kicking ass through this game and making it all the way through without some weird ending of me dying ahead of time, how about, and we won't stream it, but how about Dead by Daylight? Croc, y'all want to run a, a couple of rounds of Dead by Daylight? Now, if I run Dead by Daylight, let me tell you people, go ahead, put up my stream, I mean my uh, Steam account, because I will broadcast. So if you have Steam and you look up my name, if you want to watch us be stupid and run like pray and usually I'm the red shirt I'm almost always the one that goes down first <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> uh, then you can watch us die or watch me die repetitively on Dead by Daylight I would love the company so no you are not the one that dies first I am the one that dies first I am always the one that dies first I don't know why but I do um, and Croc's like a god at this game so yeah anyway Come watch. Come watch us be stupid. But join my Steam account. And when you do, 
I'll see that you have friends, and I'll go ahead and hit. And you guys can uh, watch broadcast through Dead by Daylight. It has been a pleasure, guys. Hey, Croc, can you see anybody that I can stream, or should I just shut it down? Almost just thinking, shut it down. What you think, guys? I think we'll shut it down. Then we'll go do Dead by Daylight. So it has been a pleasure. Love, love from me to all of you. Come watch us play. Don't you want to play with me? Please. Catch you later, guys. I can't even save it no more. Catch you later, guys. Bye.